And the recording has resumed here for more Fate Grand Order Avalon the Face Section 26. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome and welcome. Yesterday we had quite the upheaval. The coronation did not go as planned. And now I'm guessing we're going to see the aftermath in Section 26 Terminus. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe. It is always appreciated. Anyway, Section 26 Terminus. Berserkers are the only enemy. And why don't you see it that way, Mordrit? Alright, um... I think bringing along the support Castoria, she is stronger than my Castoria. And then... Nope, wrong button press. Switch out my Castoria with... Muramasa. Um, switch out... Proto with Caster Ku, aka Grimmer. Do that. Throw that. All three of the Tamlin are suffering a lot. I mean, I haven't really seen an indication as to how um, Melusine and I mean, Bargast clearly has some sort of curse. So Bargast has some sort of curse, and Melusine lived as a sentient claw for a very long time, which I guess that could be very much suffering, but beyond living as a literal sentient claw, I don't see how Bargast has suffered. Um, but again, or Melusine. <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm getting mixed around here. But Melusine lived as a claw for a very long time. True, we don't we haven't really gotten the context for that, have we? I don't think we've gotten the full context. We've just gotten Percy's point of view with that. Yeah, so I do wonder what her point of view on that is, why she's suffering. And Bargus has some sort of curse. Morgan honestly got dealt the roughest hand of all of them, I'm not gonna lie. Morgan as ASIC and then as Morgan, she got a shit hand dealt to her. And I'm actually happy that I got her in my roles now. You know, I do look forward to seeing what her bond lines will be. And I plan to read through everything after I finish Avalon Le Fay as well. We're safe! Yeah, the fairies from the north and south are pretty busy fighting each other. No time for us. I figured it'd be easy to get out once we gave the Cathedral Guards the slip, but it wasn't that simple. Yeah, because they just closed the gates. We got out by the skin of our teeth. Wait, have a trust still at the pub. Ain't much we can do for her now that the gates have been closed. Not unless you plan on approaching from the sky like Lancelot. But don't you worry. Habitrot's tougher than she looks, and she's used to this kind of stuff. I, You know what? There is one Tamlin that I forgot about. Tamlin Todorot has also suffered a lot. And I do plan on NP5 her since she is going to be in the friend point gotcha. I mean, very clearly, Morgan decided to try and play the nice way for 4,000 years, which... I mean, well, 3,600 years, which, let's be honest, if you have the patience to suffer for 3,600 years to try and get a good ending, then you are a good person. I don't care, you know? That just means you snapped because you just couldn't take that shit anymore. 3,600 years, Morgan suffered as a sick trying to bring peace to Fairy Britain, and they just kept spitting in her face. She's probably giving Mike orders and defending the pub even as we speak. We can meet up with her once again once everything calms down. And it's not like you're all that close to Habitrot anyway, are you? So don't worry about her too much. She can take care of herself. I... I guess you're right. I'm concerned about Habitrot too, but we've got more pressing matters to take care of. Now that there's been suspicion cast in Artoria for the assassination of Nock. I mean, it's only a matter of time now until there's an all-out war between the Northern and Southern Fairies. And since we teamed up with the North, all six clans are going to be out for us and the Roundtable army. Percival, you should head back to Lindinium now and... Percival, you okay? You look really pale. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm just tired. I'd like to think this uproar is confined to Salisbury. But you're right, Lord Maramasa. Time is of the essence. We need to act now before... 
Don't be ridiculous. You can hardly even breathe right now. You're not doing anything else until you get medical attention. Oh, we'll just have to find you a bed in Glowchester or some other nearby village. We can worry about what to do next after we take care of that. I guess she pulled herself together a little bit. Poor, poor Artoria. She just, she just watched one of her best friends die as well. And had her die in her arms. Poor Artoria. Not just yet. We've got some cleanup to do first. Looks like some more has overheard the commotion. At least they'll be a lot easier to handle than the riot in Salisbury. Come on, let's take care of them and... Hang on. Why are there so many of them? Mash, Da Vinci, grab Percival and get him to that forest over there. Hurry! Grimmer, Sol, Artoria, get ready to hold them off. We'll keep them busy for about two minutes, then make a break for the forest ourselves. Oh, I wish I knew that Mash wasn't going to be here. Whoops. Ninety-nine remaining! Also, why are they so small? That's weird. It's weird that they're small. Small moors. Okay. I mean, like, even the icons are small. To the game's res... I don't think the game's resolution messed up, because everything else is fine. That's weird. Alright, Maramasa. Um, get boosted. One turn. This is probably just an endurance battle, I'm guessing, so... Go like this. Don't need to use your buff. Oh, Muramasa. Damn it. Um. Uh. What? Um. What? 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 Hold, 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 hold up, hold. What the hell? Why is there four enemies? Um, that this isn't. This is fine. Question mark. <laughs> You're lying. You are lying. Portrait. You're lying to me. No, they they would not do that. They would do that. Marmasa. Deletion time. Wrong person to boost. Sorry, Castoria. Didn't mean to boost you. Um. I really hope this hits all six or five, rather. Okay, it looks like it did. Okay. Hey, I got to see even bigger numbers, though. Woo! Big numbers go burr! Big numbers go burr! Oh, boy. Oh god, it just occurred to me. I cannot let them get a turn. I really cannot let them get a turn in edgewise. If they get a turn in, I am fucked. Six attacks from Berserker tier enemies is not something that can be reasonably survived. Six enemies though, holy shit. This is... This could change everything. Six enemies, though. I'm trying to think how this can change dynamics of the game. This, If more nodes have six enemies on them, that definitely makes AoE servants like the new meta, right? Good job.
mostly curse you. Uh, not for challenge quests, unless they're like this. Okay. Whew, this was just a survival battle. Thank goodness. But this very well could change the way the game is played. I'm not gonna lie. This could very well change how the how team comps are built. Depending on how often it happens. Don't tell me the moors are overrunning all of Britain now. Oh no. I'm sorry, I should have been on the, I should have been the one to fight. Never mind that. Shut up and eat this. It's some of my best dried fruit. It'll help you recover some of your strength. I thank you, Artaria. You really are the child of prophecy. You're one of the strongest, most honest people I've ever met. I knew I was right to wait for you. To believe that you'd come. And he's genuine with that because Artoria can always see the truth. Well, there's a tons of moors all the way all over the highway, too. What the hell's going on here? How can we get anywhere like this? Hey there, you two are. How are things looking at the other cities? That bad, huh? Then I guess it's finally begun. Grimmer. We're not going to Gloucester or Londinium. There are moors popping up all over the island, and every city shut its gates. What's worse, all the fairies who have overcome with fear in all this mess are turning into moors on their own. Oh, that's... That's a domino effect, if that wasn't ever one. Nowhere in Britain is safe anymore. This is the beginning of the Great Calamity. Oh, no. The Great Calamity hath begun. Woe be to those who caused this to happen by assassinating Nock. You know, maybe we should have just held off on the invasion against Morgan for like, I guess two weeks would have been enough time for this great calamity to be dealt with. Why didn't we just wait two weeks? Already? Right, so don't forget, Morgan's been waiting on it all this time. Don't think she knew what form it would take, though. The Great Calamity is kind of like pus that builds up in Britain over the course of a millennium. Massive death throws become magical energy that spills throughout the Isle, and the Calamity that catches the magical energy grows as huge as a result. That's how the Great Calamities happen, and they're going to keep happening as long as this is as this Britain's around. It almost sounds like bloodletting. A way of, well, letting out the bad blood that's built up in the land's veins. So what kind of Calamity absorbed that blood this time? Grimmer, can you tell? Yeah, I can. Well... More that I already know. I couldn't tell what Morgan was still alive. Well, Morgan was still alive, but now that she's gone, I've got a good handle on what this calamity is. That thing that's been smoldering away in the pit for centuries is about to come out and say hello. That thing's basically why I was sent here in the first place. Although I get the feeling there's more to it than that. The red and black calamities the prophecy mentions, perhaps? I don't remember much about the red and black calamities, honestly. From what Jerry and Freaky have been smelling, there are signs of more than one calamity on the way. Woot. But those two calamities aren't my area, so I don't know what they are. Wait a moment, did you just say signs? Then does that mean the calamities still haven't begun in earnest? If that's true, then the thing at the bottom of the pit, the one A6 said would destroy all of Britain if it woke up, is still asleep. And that means we can hit it now while we still got a chance. Exactly. You're a quick one, Missy. To do that, we're going to need the Fairy of Paradise's help. The old God of Wisdom is telling me we're going to need to put her at the... We're going to put... We're going to need her to put the thing at the bottom of the pit, the one that awaits the pilgrimage at the pilgrimage's end, to sleep. Unfortunately, he didn't offer a lot of specifics. I still don't know what exactly that thing is, for example. Artoria, I think it's time you told us about your pilgrimage's final destination. About the Fairy of Paradise's true purpose. Oreo. I. It's. Uh oh. Talk about the worst possible timing. Can't they tell we're busy here? Never mind that call, Artoria. Go on. What were you going to say? Hmm? Caldea called us. That's right. Don't you see, Da Vinci? We're getting a transmission. Our electronic devices used to be inoperable here, but now they're working again. Well, damn. I don't I look a fool now. Hello? Hello? This is Codename Watson. Do you read me, Caldea? Loud and clear, Miss Watson. This is 22... 221 Baker Street. B. Baker Street. 
Last carrier pigeon message we received is four days old at this point, so I'm afraid we're not entirely clear on your current situation. The permit me to summarize ours. About one hour ago, the border's various systems began coming back online. Including the systems that would previously shut down if we'd so much as approached the aisle. At the moment, our electricity is being provided by the steam generator while we perform maintenance on all the parts of the ship. We can also tell from our radar that dense magical energy contamination has settled all over Britain. It's too soon for this to be more than conjecture, but I believe we could say Britain has begun its collapse. It was the Isle of Britain that re itself that rejected the proper human history, and therefore, the storm border. With Britain losing its power, we too can now intervene in matters more directly. So, I'm not restricted anymore. The border's back up and running. Servants are back on the menu. Naturally, Mr. Soul. Which is why I would like all of you to return post-haste. The professor still has yet to recover fully, I'm afraid. So we'll need your help to put together a navigational program that will let us maneuver through Britain's dense magical energy, didn't you? Once you've all returned to the storm border, it should be ready to begin operations in approximately six hours. What are we waiting for, Vinci? Right, the storm border on our side, we can definitely handle the pit. No, we can face any calamity that comes at us. We can handle Percival in no time, too. Yeah, I know, I know. I was just conceptually only using the round table servants because Tristan proved as a Tristan proved a precedent that the round table servants could exist in Fairy Britain. So that's why I was only using them. I, I was using a precedent, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I truly appreciate your kindness, but I have to refuse. Please, just leave me here. Time is of the essence, right? I couldn't live with myself if I slowed you all down. Don't be ridiculous. I can carry you no problem. You won't slow us down at all. Right, Da Vinci? Only if we don't run into any more packs of moors. And unfortunately, the odds of that are pretty low. Percival, it's only a matter of time until moors show up here, too. If we leave you here alone, we'll basically be leaving you to your death. But you knew that, didn't you? Even though you said you considered our Toria Mash and Soul friends? I... Yes, I know this is very selfish of me, but... Gotcha. Well, if you're that committed, I guess there's nothing more to say. Da Vinci. So instead of saying anything, we're just gonna bring you with us whether you like it or not. <laughs> Isn't that right, Red Rabbit? Yeah, I know you're hiding over there. So you already knew, huh? So much for waiting for the perfect time to surprise you. <laughs> Raja, what are you doing here, my man? Good question. I do have my reasons, but I can't tell you what they are. All I can do is ask that you please trust me and not pursue this line of questioning further. At any rate, I overheard the whole thing from behind that tree. It sounds to me like you all need a carriage and one that verges on unsafe fast, unsafely fast at that. One pulled by the fastest fairy horse in Britain. One who can keep gallantling non-stop until we reach your destination. <sighs> Excuse me. Clearly he was. Yes. Uh-oh. Make 70. Pathetic, I can't believe I'm already so exhausted. My body's burning up. My horns feel like they're going to burst. Ah! <sighs> Vargas is gonna have a final... a final stand moment, isn't she? What's going on? The more I defeat, the more of them there are. It's as though my exhaustion keeps growing. I can't even seem to think straight. There's no end to them. They're just gonna keep coming. But I must keep them away from the Round Table Army survivors. Outside the castle. Have at you, Morse! gonna be our final stand, isn't it? Um... Bowweather six choice. She also, at base, has Omen for max HP when attacked and increase NP and eight attack when enemy is defeated. Um, Numeral the Saint. I don't think this is going to matter. 
I think she's gonna die because whatever of this curse that is clearly hitting her. I think just go full buster is the way to go here. You get to MP for every enemy defeated, so... Thirty percent too. That's not bad at all. So now we start blasting. You take it away now. Shin no tsugata o misete yaru. Come on, Vargas. You can do it. I like how she's still talking about how feeble proper human history is when she's fighting wars. They couldn't have given her a different line for this battle for her NP. Like, that's kind of kind of silly if I'm gonna be honest here. It's kind of silly that they didn't bother to give her a different line for her NP during this battle. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Buster effect. Is yeah, I definitely like Bart. And I kind of ignored what you said there, by the way, earlier more. I do apologize, but um, yes, she is definitely the most normal of the three, which is why I said she's the most down to earth. At the very least, she seems. Well, again, she clearly has her own issues, but she seems like she's the most normal. All this Daka is amazingly good. She at the very least seems to be the most willing to show that she's noble, I guess, is the best way to put it. Because Melusine very clearly has that princely air to her. Uh-oh. What's going on? Everything looks red. Some more poison get into my eyes. I can barely see. May as well be nighttime. There. That was the last of them. It wasn't easy, but at least their own table army should be safe. I don't know if they are. failed. Oh no, Bargas, don't become a Moors. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough. I'm sorry I told you to escape this way. But what other way was there? If you'd stayed inside, none of you would have survived me there either. Oh no. Maybe maybe I should have just eaten them all. The weak can be food for the strong, so the strong can protect the weak. That's right. Even if Britain is reaching its end, there's still someone I want to protect. I have to go. I'm sorry, I can't rest in peace here with all of you. I have to get to Manchester. I'm its lord. I have to protect the people there. Oh no, Bargus, don't turn into a Moors. Oh no, don't consume Adonis. Oh, that just occurred to me. What if she consumes her friend, husband? Oh, that would be... Oh, Bargus, please no. You don't need. You don't deserve that kind of suffering, Bargus. None of the Tamlin fairy knights, whatever, deserve that kind of suffering. Bargus doesn't deserve whatever suffering she's about to suffer. Balbon definitely didn't deserve the suffering she suffered. Melusine, I don't know what kind of suffering she suffered, but you know, I mean, she really. Melusine's complicated. Damn it, there are moors everywhere. It must be the same predatory type we saw at Norwich. Hurry, I don't care if you grind the wheels into dust. Just make sure we reach Norwich by nightfall. But, but Lord Spriggan, what about the soldiers we left outside Salisbury? Don't say, believe me, I hate to lose soldiers like that after everything I invested in training in them. She did, didn't she? She meant she made mention of it, um. Yeah, she made mention of it outside or in Camelot just before the final battle. Didn't she? We're helpless against so many moors. Armed or not, humans can only do so much. 
We need the Fang Clan to handle a threat this large. Not that they've been any help since there's been no sign of them ever since they left for Glowchester. Th then what's the point of running back to Norwich? Shouldn't we cooperate with the Northern Fairies again to... Why do you think I'm exercising, exercising my last resort? An age of civil lines died when the North... But the North died with Nock. Damn it, of course I was going to have her assassinated eventually. But there's a time and place for these things. Damn, Spriggan! Uh, why did she kill Nock now instead of waiting until after the damn calamity? Great calamity. More history proves without a doubt that the fairies need a king to keep them in line. What in the world was she thinking? No, 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 don't tell me she wasn't thinking at all. She didn't give a single thought to the future, didn't have designs in raising power, nor designs to run this own country her own way. She didn't think about any of that? She killed Nox solely because she didn't... L no. Are you... I I fully believe Spriggan in this because he is human, but... Is Aurora... So... Stupid? And... Is she that stupid and petty? I can't believe it. How in the world did that monster survive for 2,000 years with such an empty head? Fuck. Aurora is, um... Okay, um... Don't trust the Northern Fairies. Nock was a calamity. Salisbury is Lady Aurora's city. We'll protect it ourselves. Have any fairies been infected with Moore's poison? Let us know before it gets worse. We'll treat you right away. It's dangerous outside. Don't let the humans out of the city. They're our property. Anyone who tries to open the gate is a traitor. If you see someone trying it, say something. Conduct yourselves in a manner befitting the clans. Lady Aurora will save us. Long live Lady Aurora. Long live Lady Aurora. Long live Lady Aurora. Long live Lady Aurora. She has a bit of a cult following too, doesn't she? Oh, that's actually one of Melusine's lines. Oh good, I'm glad to see the nights pass without incident. And I'm especially glad things have calmed down outside. Here, Coral. Come, join me for a cup of morning tea. Lady Aurora. Um, I'm afraid I can't agree about the night passing without incident. There are so many fairy corpses on the street that we're having trouble disposing of them. Especially since we can't take them outside with the gates closed. And then um, there are the northern fairies. Oh yes, it's very sad how things turn out for them. Not only is Nock dead, but now everyone knows Edinburgh's secret. What happened to the northern fairies who were here in Salisbury? They collapsed immediately after Lady Nock's death. We took the ones who were still breathing to the rearing house and are keeping them under close watch. The rearing house? Since when have we had a rearing house? You ordered it built 16 years ago to raise human children. It's been abandoned for six years now, so I took the liberty of repurposing it. Oh yes, that darling little house. I always did like it, and it turned out so wonderfully adorable. Also, is it just me, or does um Aurora's eyes here? I don't know if it's just the way she's drawn, but like her right eye, it almost looks like it's glitchy. Or it's like, it's got like a blur effect on it. I don't know if it's the way she's drawn or if that's intentionally being done, but her right eye just in this sprite looks like it's got a bit of a blur effect. But you know, now what was his name again? Well, ever since I cast out that gray-haired human boy, I haven't quite been able to bring myself to visit again. It's the way it's drawn. Okay. Oh, I thought you'd all forgotten all about him. Lady Aurora, may I ask why you cast him out? What do you mean? He grew up after using the spear only once, remember? And he couldn't become the child of prophecy once he had gr looked grown up, right? He was human after all. Right. Of course. Was I wrong to reopen the rearing house? Oh no, Coral. It was a wonderful idea. The building is fully equipped for pest control. It's perfect for the injured northern fairies. A wave of my finger will send them all to their eternal rest. Um, but never mind them. Has the child of prophecy's gang in been captured yet? I can't believe they'd stoop so low as to kill Nock just because they lost the competition. We'll have to make sure the Child of Prophecy is brought to justice for this abominable crime. The foreign mage is just as culpable, but I'm sure the Child of Prophecy must have tricked him into helping her. I'll have to ask that his sentence be lighter. He won't be able to tell me all about the outside world if he's dead. <laughs> Does that sound lovely, Coral? I wonder what, outside, what, what the world outside Brighton is like. Humans made everything in that world, and so many different kind of humans at that. 
I'm sure it must be simply overflowing with wonders that will make your eyes pop out of your head. Lady Aurora, I'm afraid now is not the time for that. The number of moors outside the city has continued to grow, and the fairies from nearby villages have been pounding on our gates asking to be let in. There are even some fairies here in Salisbury who have been showing signs of moors disease. We need to increase our shelter capacity immediately. Once we reopen the gate and let refugees in, we'll need to open the cathedral's doors as well. We can't possibly tend to them all ourselves. So we'll also have to request aid from the humans in Gloucester or Lord Din. Why bother? Just leave the gates closed. Okay. Oh, and do you have the human guards dispose of the fairies with Moore's disease, won't you? That's the whole reason we've been raising humans in the first place. Lady Aurora, what are you saying? I know humans are lower life forms, but they still feel. It seems far too cruel to have them put down their own friends and neighbors. And what about the refugees outside? How are we... Oh, don't worry about them. They're very strong. Or they wouldn't have chosen to live in the dingy forest instead of my lovely city. I'm sure they'll find some way to get through this. We just have to focus on keeping Salisbury safe. Time will take care of everything, Coral. All I have to do is stay calm and wait. So you're not going to do anything. You just want us to remain here on the bell tower where it's safe? Now, now, Coral, don't be difficult. I'd hate to have to strip you of those pretty, pretty wings. Like I did to Hal of Aromia. You remember him, right? He was always arguing with me with his silly logic. You're not like him, right? You're a smart girl who understands my feelings. Oh, okay. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Aurora. That's exactly why I know you'll continue working for me for the rest of your days. Aurora's, um... Aurora something, isn't she? And that's all we know. We only have the wind tiding to go on, so we don't have any more details. But it looks like the coronation at Salisbury was interrupted. The child of prophecy killed Lady Nock. And mass quantities of moors have been appearing all around Britain. They also said the moors poison has been seeping outside of the pit, and that all of Cabalat is subsumed in, in a black fog. You see, it seems great calamity has begun then. But this changes nothing for Gloucester. As long as the fairies about to, about to abide by Gloucester's way of doing things, that is, to have fun above all else, regardless of the clan affiliation, then offer a refugee to anyone who asks. My fate domain is still alive and well. No moors will be making their way into Gloucester. Although, there isn't anything we can do for fairies within Gloucester who spontaneously turn into moors. We'll just have to have the Fang Clan mercenaries dispose of them. No, on second thought, send them out to rescue fairies stranded in the nearby villages. And Murray in here. Murian's mind is broken. At this point, I think it's pretty clear Murian's mind has snapped. The Fang Clan has more resistance to Moor's poison than the other clans. That's why they were able to kill the Moor's King. So if the only problem is explosion of Moor's, the Fang Clan should be able to handle it. What we need to prepare for is the calamity afterwards. That fog or whatever it is coming from the pit. Even though Morgan is gone now, the system she created is still rock solid. Kimlot has always held the Fang Clan in reserve for situations like this. As long as we use them properly, we all have nothing to fear from the Calamity. Um, Lady Murian, the Fang Clan is... Well... Hmm? What are you still doing here? I thought I'd give you an order. I'm going to keep studying the pit. I'm finally getting to the truth of it. There are passages in the documents Morgan had away about Britain's origins. Sir Nana and the First Prophecy. If I can decipher them, I'll know what the Great Calamity really is. Whatever is trying to destroy our Britain, I swear to reveal it or I'm not the head of the Wing Clan and the Lord of Gloucester. Y yes, Lady Murian. It's no wonder you're Britain's wisest, fairest ruler. We Gloucestonians are proud to have you as our leader. Don't worry, we'll take care of the city. Also, now I'm starting to see what the um, trailer for this section of the Lost Belt was talking about with regards to the Wing Clan. The wisdom has become beguiled or something like that but Marianne's mind her greatest strength is failing her now no, this is no time to take a breather there's not a moment to spare here I need to find the answer before Koyang gets back or I won't be able to call myself her friend Koyang's been in the room the whole time isn't it is it hasn't she I knew it Koyang told me about these beings called gods and it looks like there was once a god in Britain too Sir Nunnus the god of beasts and islands who part of the seas that must be the god at the bottom of the pit. 
The real question is, why did this god disappear? What did the six clans wish for? Most of all, what made this world go down a different route than proper human history in the first place? I'm so close to the answer now. I can almost taste it. 14,000 years ago, an invader that fell to the planet from a shooting star. And then the fairies... No, that can't be right. But it's the only explanation. Then we brought this on ourselves? No, fairy sins are their own. You can't punish children for their parents' sins. Besides, if this really is true, then the pit existing makes sense. It isn't a god trying to destroy us, but the uh, Isle of Britain it's Uh... Congratulations, Murian. You got it. And thank you for getting rid of the Fang Clan, by the way. That made it so much easier for the Calamity to spread unchecked. Had the Fang Clan still been around, they'd have kept killing enough Moors that the Great Calamity would never show up. This time I'm going all out. The more Calamities, the better. Thanks for doing your part to end things. Besides, you got your revenge. You learned the truth about Britain. You did everything you wanted, yes? No regrets, then it's time to pack it in. You? Yes, that's right. But before you go, permit me with one final confession. I'm sorry for sticking the Fang Clan on the Wing Clan all those years ago. Oh. I honestly didn't have any real reason. I was just in a bad mood that day. Terribly sorry. Oh, somebody's been behind the scenes for a long time here. Oh, no. Mer. There goes Murian. Things are definitely starting to progress. Um, so, I was right so far about what the separation was. Sephir is the reason this Lost Belt is how it is. But the fairies did something that caused this as well? Did the six fairies side with Sephir or something? And that's why they, they're they the one, they have their sins or something? I don't know. Form your party immediately before the battle begins. Would you like to start the quest? Yes. It's an Avenger class threat. It's been a day and a half since I started galloping along the coastline. We should be at the western store soon. Incidentally, I've started to lose all feeling on my forelegs. My hind legs too, for that matter. To be perfectly blunt, I'm afraid any more running could endanger my life. My life is a fey racehorse, that is. You ran yourself ragged for us? Not at all. Putting my legs aside, the wagon wheels are about 20 seconds from falling off. Think back to what they told. They came to a world, it was all just sea. So, so I, so Sephir wiped out everything. I think that is firmly established just based on everything. This is a timeline where Sephir succeeded in wiping out everything. But the fairies had some role to play in this, based off of what Murian said. I just... I don't know how the fairies and Sephir are connected. Sephir was going against all life. Like, how could the fairies have survived Sephir if not for sight? But then again, Sir Nunnus also survived, so did the fairies and Sir Nunnus hide in the reverse side of the world or something? But it, there wasn't a reverse side of the world at that point. So maybe just a different layer? I don't know. Are y'all ready to run to the ocean as soon as you're out of my carriage? I see a whole mess of moors over on the shore. I never did figure out what exactly propeller humming history was. <laughs> oh, Redra. But I suspect it means you're all the brave warriors destined to truly save her. It's been an honor to accompany you on your journey. Alright, this is as far as I go. Take care, everyone. Redra, no! Thanks, Redra. You've been the best damn horse I've ever seen. Come on, Grimmer. It's our turn now. Let's clear them a path. Up to four servants can, from your party can be selected in this quest. Alright, um... So really quickly here, just because my memory can be 
shite sometimes. Avenger is weak to Moon Cancer. So that means the restrictions on Fairy Britain have lifted. Anything can come in. So, it's time to start breaking them out. Um, I think the obvious answer here is it's BB time. And then, in the back line, we have some people that need some bonding. So, let's see here. Let's see. Hime, um, Canis, and Koyan. I'm gonna wait on Percy, Morgan, Melusine, um, and eventually Bargast as well. And then we'll just throw some Bond CEs on everybody. Because I'm sure that this is not going to be a hard fight. I can do it with these three. I'm totally fine, right? <clears throat> OG Ilya is currently in second place. So Sitanai is going to be the next one after Melusine to get ranked up, or leveled up here. Okay. Um, but this is annoying, to be sure. Um, very annoying. I should be fine here. In fact, I think this is a good choice. Um, I have not yet. I do know I need to go. I will probably be doing some leveling, like, within the next bit here. Hang on, I'm trying to think here. Um, that's fine to stay as it is for now. There we go. Do -do -do. But I will be. Prob I wanted to jump into the start of this, at least today. You mean my free, um, a right. That was not as hard hitting as I was hoping it would be. Oh, I know. I wanted to start part three, is why I, I didn't fully finish my sentence. I wanted to at least start part three today. But that was not what I was hoping would happen. Oh, that's why, because there's an Avenger at the very back of the line of this all that I was not paying attention to. I swear, I am so observant. I'm like the most observant observer that there is, you know? I, I impress myself with my observation skills sometimes. I totally saw that that Avenger at the very, very bottom line. So, such good, much wow. Welcome, by the way. Welcome to the stream. Happy things, happy things. Okay. Um, we should be capable of wiping out Avenger Moore here. Baby go. You're still in part two. Well, spoilers abound, so be warned. Two Avengers this time. Well, I think it's BB channel time. Uh, focus the big one down. The hobby things overall outlaw hobby things. You got max skilled mouse. Nice! And level 120! Damn. You went hard on her, didn't you? And as hard on her, you went hard to get her. Nice Full appen. How many copies of her did you get? Outlaw. 
NB7. That's right, I forgot, you're the one that is bragging in your message. I forgot that you were the one that, in, that was bragging in your message, NP7. Yeah, I forgot about that. That had to be some incredible amounts of luck. Well, good for you, man. Good for you. I'm glad you got a uh, very strong servant. This mellow scene definitely does seem powerful. Well, in less than 1k quartz, too? Damn! Luck really was on your side, wasn't it? Hey, Velvet, welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Happy things, happy things. Fairy Britain has gone to shit. <laughs> 2k for her? That might take a while, depending on how many rare prisons we got. Got Koyan in 14. Nice, nice. I got very lucky with Koyan. Thankfully. And I did take her to the casino. I didn't win. I think Koyan laughed at me because I didn't win at the casino. You know? And this will definitely sound nerdy, but I had... I made Koyan my favorite servant, and I had Koyan on my, on my phone, on my lap, facing at the slot machine as I played. So that sounds very much nerdy. But I did it. Because I promised her I would. You're in pain. Oh no, Velvet. Pain is not good. Command room's frantic. Oh no. Congratulations on the double done, Soul. Good to see you safe and sound. This place seems to be seriously bad news. Our sensors are detecting a possibly absurd amount of magical energy. According to Shiva, we only have a few hours until the collapse begins. May I ask why you're in pain, by the way, Velvet? I wish I could give you time to take a breather in your quarters. I really do. But can you tell me more about what... Just what is going on here before I have an aneurysm? The first roll call. You must be Artoria, the King Arthur of Fairy Britain. That must be Percival of the Round Table Army. That's obviously Ku Kulan. And this must be Senji Muramasa, the alter ego disciple of the Foreign God. Excellent! I can see they're all just as capable and dependable as I thought. Having them on board should give us just the edge we need. Guten Tag, denizens of the Land of Fey. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Why did you decide not to roll, Mordred? I'm Goroth Music, Director of Chaldea and Commander of the Border. Given the circumstances, I see no point in discriminating between those of you from proper human history and those of you from the Lost Belt. Since we're all in the same very rapidly sinking boat, I hope I can count on you resolving this unprecedented crisis. By the way, how come there are so few of you? Didn't Da Vinci's reports mention at least a few others? Gareth and Oberon didn't make it. Gareth honestly went out like a champ. Let's be honest here. What? How about the Northern Fairies then? Didn't you have Mab match with the Mab lookalike, where you became Mab? I mean, mad friends. Nock passed away during her coronation. Oh, I see. Then her death couldn't have been a peaceful one. What a terrible shame. Gordolf, you've grown so much, man! You looked at all she's done from now until the start of the last battle, and you still don't like her. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I'm very much intrigued at where Koyan's character is gonna be taken. I'm very intrigued as to where they're gonna take Koyan's character. Because she's a beast, In she's either, I can't remember if she's a bull, I don't think she's a full-fledged beast, I think she's a beast candidate. So she has some love for humanity. And I want to see what exactly, what form that love takes. You know? Plus, I'm not going to lie. She is very attractive. <clears throat> well, we can't count on help from those who have already passed on, and there's no point in dwelling on it. All right, let me tell you what the situation is here. We've begun our water takeoff sequence, but it's going to be several hours yet before we can leave. Technical advisor, I need you in the computer room yesterday. New professor needs your help. Mash, see that our two guests are well tended to. No, wait. Take Percival to the infirmary first. He's not looking too good. Ramasa, Grimmer, now that you're on board my ship, you'll be treated like any other Chaldean servant. Captain Nemo here will brief you on our plan of attack. As for you, Sol. <laughs> I see you're in just as sorry state as ever, but that's nothing new for you by now, is it? First, I want you to get yourself checked over at the infirmary, but then use our precious few air command spells to replenish yours. After that, you're to return here and brief myself and the administrative advisor on every place you visited in Britain. 
As you know, we'll be going in there ourselves in the storm border in just a few hours. So we're going to need all the information you can give us on the land and the fairies who live in it. Sir, yes sir! Good, it's been a day and a half since our last transmission. So if we leave in six hours, that'll be about two days. I don't see the entire world ending in two days, so we should still have plenty of time. I think. Nonetheless, this is going to be a fearsome battle, so make sure you're all well rested and ready for anything. Will do. Oh, I just thought, what is Koyan going to do if she sees Murray and Dad? Two hours later. I see. Very well, I believe I have a firm grasp on what transpired it since our last communication. I appreciate your attention to detail, Mr. Soul. With your information, I know what we need to do now. Though, whether we can do it is an entire ma another matter entirely. Now, so what should we do then? Broadly speaking, we have two goals. The first is to prevent Britain from collapsing. That will require us to investigate the pit, stop the calamity, and wipe out the moors that have been springing up all over Britain. And the second is acquiring the Divine Construct. We came very close on the latter, but it seems we were thwarted at the last moment. Ah oh, yes, the sacred lance that was supposed to be sent from Camelot. I don't blame the Round Table Army for this, but I still can't but wonder if they couldn't have finished this just a day sooner. Damn it! About that, Grimmer, could we see you here for a moment? What's up? Got a question for me? I do, yes, it pertains to the Divine Construct. We thought we could achieve that goal by seizing one of Camelot's sacred lances. But according to Mr. Soul, you seem to be a bit put off when the topic came up before. May I ask why that is... Secret lines made by Morgan so that we can use ourselves. Even if we can't, it'll be an invaluable thanks, Percival. I did remember seeing Ku act like that. I was one I'm not sure why he did, though. Damn, you got a mind like a steel trap, don't you? Soul? Yeah, that's right. You guys are bucking up the wrong tree. Taking one of Camelot's secret lances for yourself doesn't mean you'll automatically be able to fit it to this ship. Divine constructs are closely tied to their wielder. You might not you might be able to create one, but having the right to actually use it isn't the same thing. Golf, she rattled, golf! Until you guys get back to what you at Caldea know what all proper human history lost when the world was wiped clean, you'll never be granted a divine construct of your own. So we lost something during the bleached earth phenomenon. Interesting. It can't be, but no, it's the only logical explanation. So that's why we have to come to this lost belt. And Miss Sion sent us here because she knew about it. Sion knew something about knew about something before Da Vinci. That's a shock. Uh, alert! Alert! There's been a change in Central Britain's gravity. Looks as strong as the foreign gods' pseudo black holes. Uh, something's really gross is emerging from there. I don't even want to look at it. Yeah, that's bad. I'm seeing fire spreading all over Britain. Looks like it started in the northern northwestern part of the Isle. A whole tsunami of fiery wind is blowing across all of Britain from Manchester. Fire in Manchester. Oh no. Vargas. Keep it together. Gather as much detailed information as you can. I also want to see these phenomena myself. Point the ultra long range lens we used in Atlantis at Central Britain. I'm trying, but we can't look at that thing. Well, I think we can't see a thing out there. It's as dark as the bottom of the ocean out there. We're still positive about what's going on. It looks like we'll have to go see what's going on for ourselves. Any word from Professor? How much longer until the navigation program is done? She said it's already done. It just needs 30 more minutes to test it before it's deployed. It's good to have Da Vinci back. That's three hours sooner than I expected. Gordal, Holmes, the ship is ready for battle. Soul, would you bring Mash and Artoria Castor here? We don't have a single second to spare. I hate to do this, but it looks like we won't have any time for a test drive before we head out. Okay, that should handle your minor injuries, and I also gave you a stimulant ampule. But are you sure you don't want to try the recovery pod? It might not help you recover completely, but it should at least give you a little more energy. Thank you for your help, Da Vinci, but yes, I'm sure. I'll wait until after the Great Calamity has been dealt with. If I get into that bed, I'll be unconscious for several days, right? I'm the commander of the Round Table Army, and that's time I can't afford to lose. Even if I can't be of much help, I still want to see what becomes of Britain. And besides, how could I ever face my soldiers if I told them that while Britain faced its crisis, I was asleep? Thank you, Mordred. Besides, there's something I need to tell you too, Artoria. I was hoping to keep this to myself, but I can't do that now that I've blabbed it out back at the cathedral. This is about you being a substitute child of prophecy, isn't it? Is that also why you're in poor health right now? From what I've gathered, it was Aurora who took you out, who took you and all those other human children in just after you were born. Woodwoes was the one who saw you had talent at the rearing house, and Lancelot taught you how to use a sword. 
I'm guessing the purpose behind all this was to create their own child of prophecy? That's right. After Ainsel's prophecy became known, a number of different measures were taken in response to the child of prophecy. The Queen's army captured all fairies who had just been born. Some villages hid next generation fairies who met the description. And some villages raised them in secret. The Lord of Salisbury's idea was this. If we don't know where the Child of Prophecy will appear, we can just prepare our own in the meantime. So that's why you and the other human children were taken in and raised to be warriors. You were meant to serve as the Child of Prophecy in case the real one didn't appear 16 years later. True, that may have been one of their reasons. Three mellow scenes, nice, outlaw. Oh wait, you're talking in battle, you have... So you're in that note, so you have the support mel... Wait, three? How can you have three? Oh, I'm confused. How do you have three mellow scenes? So what happened afterwards? Word was determined that I had the most potential out of the three candidates. But how can you have a support mellow? Oh, no. The mandatory support mellow. That's the one. Okay. The NPC mellow scene. Okay, yeah, I get you now. I, I, now I remember. That has to be a trip. <laughs> they fixed it for Castoria, but not Malusine. That's hilarious. It's the Spider-Man meme. All the Malusines are standing in a triangle pointing at one another. But what do they do there? Is Malusine arrogant enough to do anything more with herself? Hmm. Or will they kill each other in a bloodbath to assert their dominance as the true Melusine? Found out next time on Melusine Z. The one she uses Lancelot's sword. Are you talking about the NP? What's more, Salisbury possessed one of the weapons Asic the Savior used to save Britain in the Fey era. The spear. The spear of selection. However, Asik had placed a seal in the spear that prevented any sinner from using it. Yes, I have seen her first, her level 1 NP. Many times, in fact, because she used it in that one battle. Many times. Three stages about to NP in AoE form. You're about to synchro summon like nobody's business, outlaw. Oh, it's not actually a sword. Right, I do think, I do recall her saying something about that, didn't she? Practice, that meant only humans could even touch the spear, let alone wield it. So that's why they use human children. Even if they're not as strong as fairies, they could use the spear of selection. And that was the bar that had to be met to call oneself the child of prophecy. That's right. Then when I was ten years old, I succeeded at drawing out the spear of selection's power. I think it chose me, that it wanted me to use it to kill wicked fairies. I'm sure I heard a voice saying something like that in my head. That was also when the Mirror Clan disappeared from Britain. The day the Spear of Selection chose me was also the day she went to the Lake District of our own... She went to the Lake District on our own Lord's orders. Hmm, hang on, that doesn't make sense. The Mirror Clan disappeared six years ago, right? But you're... The Spear of Selection uses its wielder's life force to generate its true power. I'm sorry, Artoria, the truth is, I'm 16 years old too. I was 10 when the Spear of Selection chose me, and aged 10 years as a result. Okay. Interesting. So he has the body of a 26-year-old, but the mind of a 16-year-old. He's still a bro. That's why I have the body of a 26-year-old. Oh, that was a... Why did Castoria react like that? Hang on. Why did Castoria just react with such a despairful look? And I can see that, you know. Melusine considers herself a fighter jet, essentially. Zerkerlot has a fighter jet. But British humans only live 30 years on average. That's why you didn't age anymore the second time you used it. You couldn't age anymore. Does that mean the only reason you're still alive now is... Yes, I must have been born stronger than other humans. I guess Lord Woodwose did choose well, huh? That's why I owe you an apology, Artoria. I was raised to be a substitute for you. No, to be a threat to you. But instead of coming clean about that, I began an organization meant to support you. I used your name without permission, just so I could put the Round Table army together for my own selfish reasons. I have no right to speak about peace in Britain, but I went around preaching it all the same. That's... that's not true at all. You didn't do this for yourself. You never did. Even now, you're... 
You're forcing yourself into action just to save Melusine. Arturia can see the truth. Attention Stormborn, the ship is now battle ready. We've detected a powerful gravitational fluctuation in central Britain. Holmes believes this is the start of Britain's collapse. In 30 minutes we will transition into flight mode and attempt to enter British airspace ourselves. All hands to the bridge. All hands to the bridge. I repeat, the ship is now. Looks like that's all we've got time for now. I'm heading to the computer room. What about you two? I'll go to the bridge too. I may be an imposter, but I still call myself a knight of the round table. If nothing else, I want to honor my companions who lost their lives in the battlefield by seeing for myself what becomes of Britain. My own wish may be nothing to speak about, but I can at least honor theirs. A future where humans and fairies can coexist in peace. Boy. Oh. Ah. Uh, um. Well. That's animated. That's kind of freaky. It almost looks like hands grasping out from there. I'm trying to... I can't even... Are these just like the ruined remains of some of the cities? I'm going to Manchester first. Also, this all started because Baobon sacrificed herself to the to Sir Nunnis. If they didn't... <sighs> did the fairies really bring this all on themselves by betraying Morgan like they did? Are we the baddies? This is so confusing! No battle node. you go with the fights. Oh, the animation changes the further you go with the fights. Okay, I get you. What the devil's going on here? It's only been a, half, a day and a half. How is all of Britain burning in only a day and a half? I mean, I knew more for bad news, but this is unbelievable. No, Moors don't use fire. Something else did this. This has got to be the Red Calamity. Looks like the fire is coming from Manchester. Isn't that where we made that promise with Vargas? That we'd help some fairies migrate to proper human history if things went belly up? That's right, Vargas told me about that. She said she had already talked to Manchester's residents about the prospect of migrating outside Britain. And that they all loved the idea. Oh, well, hopefully... We need to stop by Manchester first, then save as many of them as possible? Question mark? That's where we're headed. We need to find out what's causing the fire anyway. Oh, I'm very worried about Vargas. It'll be something of a detour, but it shouldn't affect our entry route to the pit. How are things on your end, Da Vinci? All systems green. We're making good time at 60 knots, or 111 kilom kilometers per hour. You want to head to Manchester, right? I was just thinking we should make that our first stop, too. We have to keep our promise to Vargas, after all. We should be there in 10 minutes, but it's surrounded by a massive fire. At least the fairies inside should be safe. A town's ramparts ought to keep the fire out. We'll have to move the fairies onto the storm border all at once, since there won't be time to guide them one at a time. So, Sol, I'd like you and Mash to head there ahead of us and let up, let them know we're coming, okay? I'll send the shadow border down to the surface as soon as we arrive in Manchester's airspace. It'll land automatically, but you'll still need a driver to get you there. Can you do that, Monier? Sure thing, I guess I'm the only one who can, since Chubby's gotta stay here as commander. I'm impressed you accept it so readily, Monier. But I suppose you are the board's longest serving pilot. Oh, well, pretty much. Besides, I've had it easy up until now. Okay, great. Okay, I'm counting on you guys to gather up and gather everyone, gather around. You gotta do that. I'm counting on you guys to round everyone up and fill them in. Just be ready to welcome them aboard, Captain. I'm worried, though. 
And they feel like a paratrooper. It's been she thought of an autopilot mode for everything. Scanning for hostile entities. Good. No more is nearby. Outside temperature is a thousand degrees Celsius. Okay, hang on. I gotta see. Um. Thousand. One thousand eight hundred and thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Um. I want to check something. That's not hot enough to melt steel, but it melts. Okay, I don't think it, it don't. No, it's not enough to melt iron either. Um, I want to see the melting point of metals here. That's like running around inside the forest fire. Make sure you missed the codes. I think that's hotter than a forest fire, Monier. All right, full speed ahead to Manchester. Let's go. Yeah, that's hot enough to almost melt copper. Damn. Open the hatch. We're headed out. Huh? When you're the hatch is still locked. We need you to... I'm sorry, I can't... You can't go out there now. Damn it. What the hell's going on here? You guys said Manchester was supposed to be this quaint, idyllic town, right? So what the hell am I looking at? When you're... What are you talking about? Come to the monitor. Oh, I'm not liking this. Oh, no. What are those? They're corpses. A goddamn mountain of corpses. And not just fairies. Humans, too. And they didn't die in the fire. The human corpses are all torn apart, looks like. By fangs. And the fairies were hacked to bits with swords. Which means... Oh, no, Vargas, no. No, Vargas, no. Help, help, she's gonna kill me, she's gonna kill me! Something's wrong with Lady Vargas. I don't wanna die, I don't wanna die, she said we would all survive. She said Caldea would keep us safe, even if the Great Calamity struck here. No, I don't wanna die anymore. I hate fire, I hate knights. Help, help, save me, Oberon. Oh, she was one of the fairies that re- Oh, no. I don't wanna be born just to be killed all over again. Oh no. Oh no, Bargus. What's become of you? Bargus. That's Bargus? She doesn't look anything like you described her in your reports. D did she do this to Manchester? I gotta go. I gotta. Something's going on with it. I. I. So get back here, you idiot. Vargas, what happened? Please? Caldea, you're here just like you promised. But you can't be here. Leave. Go away. You need to escape. Britain's fairies are... It's all my fault. I should have known better. Ah. Ah. Master Quick, get back into the Shadow Border. It's not safe out here. Dear God, she just kicked the board like it was a damn football. Get the board out of here, Monier. That's the magical eater, energy eater Da Vinci wrote about in her reports. She's sucking up Senpai's life force. I'm trying, but the steering wheel's not. Hang on. She's going away on her own. Guess she's not too interested in us. Pick the other option and keep being inside the board. I mean, honestly, Vargas seemed the most re- Like I said, Vargas is the most reasonable of the knights. Though clearly this curse has definitely affected her badly. Well, whatever this curse is, she's headed outside the city. I think towards Glochester. And she's not alone. There's a bunch of black dog-like creatures following her. She's got them all lined up in a procession. It's like watching some twisted real-life Pied Piper of Hamlin. Need to escape Britain's fairies. You're here just like you promised, but you can't be here. Leave, go away. You need to escape Britain's fairies. Are it's all my fault. I should have known better. Britain's fairies are all what? Is that 
Bargus. Oh, Bargus is the Black Calamity? That's a fucking cruel fate. So Morgan was keeping her contained. Oh, Bargus. Mother no battle no. Oh man, she probably killed her. She probably killed that. Her friend Adonis. Oh. At that point, though, given that she killed the one she cared for the most, and the people she cared for the most, is it. Would it be a better fate to just put her out of her misery so she doesn't have to deal with the guilt? Oh gosh. I've got the Shadow Bar safely stowed away. Are you guys ready to head to the pit now? Yes, Manchester's been completely destroyed. Given what has become of Bargast and the fact that she is now leading a procession of black dogs, I believe it'd be best to refer to her as the Calamity of the Beast from here on. Regardless, though, we could take her on now. I agree that we should make our way towards the pit first. I trust there are no objections. Hey, come on. Just because it's true doesn't mean you gotta be so blunt about it. She might have been our enemy. But Bargus is one of the few fairies in Fairy Britain who... It's okay. I'm not sure why Bargus slaughtered all of Manchester. Whatever the reason, it's no surprise she became a Moors after doing something so horrific. I have no problem calling her a calamity now. Whoa, okay, Artoria. Okay, if you're sure, just don't push yourself too hard. Okay, Artoria? In any case, we'll have to fight Bargus eventually, since she's the source of the fire spreading all over Britain. The walled cities are still holding out, but the fires completely devastated the forests and plains. It also looks like the smoke from the fire is gathering in the sky and forming thunderclouds. She's consuming the lightning they generate as her primary food source. Her magical energy grows with every step she takes. We're going to have to stop her before she becomes a un literally unstoppable monster. Even so, we need to check down the pit first. That's just both a red calamity and a black calamity, right? We can't go to war until we know the enemy's strength. Luckily, luckily the calamity of the beast is still moving slowly. She seems to be headed to Oxford right now, but at this pace it'll take her a good four to five hours to get there. That should give us enough time to come up with a plan of attack. Got that, Artoria? Soul? I honestly think that defeating her is the only way at this point. She would not be able to live with herself otherwise. It's probably what she wants, too. What is that? What is that? No, it's just gross. I don't want to look at it anymore. Stop that, lookout. What are you talking about? You can see into the pit, can't you? Save the whining for later and put it up on monitor. Now. Our primary objective is to acquire the Sacred Lance at Camelot, whether we can use it or not. So you need to get a handle on what's going on with the pit as soon as possible. Y yes, sir. Put it up on the monitor now. Big. Chills. Sarnanus. Blackness seeping from the pit is actually severe multi-layered curse contamination. Whatever you do, don't touch it. It'll make you go insane and rot your whole body. Although, whoa, this is amazing. The inside of the pit's almost like a whole other dimension. Every single fight, every signal I fire at it just disappears. It's basically a cursed bottomless pit. And never mind the pit itself. That's the real problem. A curse that rots the soul, huh? So, Sir Nonis accepted Balban as a sacrifice and is incorporating her cursed body into the curse that he's spreading. What are you going what are you doing, Dita Collection? Get to work already. I'm trying, but I can't. I can't get a read on its magic energy or its spirit origin. I'm not even getting any real numbers for its mass or value. Even when I compare it against the pit itself, just the part we're seeing here showing up is over two kilometers long. Whatever it is, it's impossibly big. There's no other creature like this, not even in the deepest ocean trenches. Does King Protea finally have her match? Grimmer, is this the same god that was present during the Britain's Genesis? Yep, that's Sir Nunnus, the Beast God. In Celtic mythology, it's the King of Beasts and the one who knows Hell itself. Here, it's the being responsible for Britain's creation. That thing's why the old god of wisdom chose me to come here as his vessel. That said, you didn't mention how much it changed. This is his idea of a joke, I ain't laughing. This thing's way too big for anyone, human or fairy, to do something about. That's not good. He's a big boy. He 
he's just a big... Okay, I retract what I was about to say. I was about to call him a big fluffball. But I retract that after hearing that roar. It's a creature from the mural. Is this really happening? Please tell me this is just a bad dream. Zeus, I can understand. He was a machine, at least. I'm the terrible might have been a mass of mammoth, but it made sense in the for the frigid tundra. But that, that's a living creature. There's no way any living creature could be that huge. That's just standing there right in front of Camelot. We can't possibly go in to collect Rongo Miniot now. Or can we? What do you think, Administrative Advisor? Is there a chance we can get past this thing? I hate to see the score off, but I simply do not know. We simply know far too little about that creature to say anything for certain at this point. I can see that even viewing it through the monitor is enough to give me a palp is enough to give me palpitations. That creature is pure, concentrated curse. In fact, I dare say there has never been a maledict god more powerful. It would be suicide to set foot in Camelot right now. And yet, I suspect that creature is precisely why it could be more prepared for the sacred lances. Take a look at where she kept them. And Asic, I mean Queen Morgan, was preparing a means to defeat that thing. She had a plan to protect Britain all along. Yeah, we need to get to Camelot then. I agree. Besides, the big guy isn't so much just budged. Maybe he's just there, existing, and that's what he does. Plus, servants ought to be able to withstand some degree of curse. So I say we do what Soul says and head down to Camelot's throne room right now before... We can't. It's too late. It's all too late. Oh no, the pl that haze looks like... a hand. Oh, like that. I didn't even think of that. It's the same as the calamity we saw in Norwich. Then that must mean it was... Yes, that calamity was just Sir Nunnis' hands. Hand. One of many. Never mind that now, that hand thing is creeping up the walls towards Camelot. It's destroying the castle. Magic on the gauge is going haywire. The curse contamination emanating from the pit just skyrocketed. It's currently at 640 million tons and still rising. It's among a tsunami of curse big enough to cover all of Britain. It looks menacing, I'm not gonna lie. That is menacing looking. Hard to port, 180 degrees. We need to get out of this airspace now. If that stuff swallows up the board, we're done for. Don't even let one of its fingers so much as graze us. I'm giving it all we got, but we're not getting any more altitude. Sir Nonus must have 100, 200, I can't even count how many hands it's got. They're everywhere you look. We can't avoid them all, let alone get away from them. Damn it, Da Vinci, what about the Shadow Border? It won't work. Even if we could get everyone on board in time, there's nowhere to run with the ground covered in curses. There's no way out of this. I think this might be it for us. Contact in 6, in 7, 6, 5. Goodbye, everyone. It's been swell knowing you. What's gonna happen to save us? Something's gonna save us. Uh... Bitch? We have visibility again. Those icky things are gone. Our engine outputs back where it should be, too. We can get out of here, no problem now. Good, that makes all the trouble I went to worth it. Now, do you all see why NFF Services guarantees safety protection production is the best in the business? That voice, that honeyed, ice-cold, dangerously alluring, bitchy voice. That can only be... Koyanskaya. So Koyan saved us. Oh. Lady Marian, did you leave the lights off again? Oh, you're gonna ruin your eyes like this. I just got back from the coronation. I'm sure you've already heard how it turned out, but... Bloodstains. Murian! 
Ko Ko Yan, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Still hadn't said a proper goodbye. Oh, perfect. I actually came here to say goodbye myself. Thank you so much for all your help with fundraising and product distribution in Glowchester. Moors may be the only new creatures I imagine managed to acquire here in Britain. But I still enjoyed some lovely days off thanks to your generosity. I promise to repay this favor one day. As soon as I finish making my primate zoo, you'll be the first to receive an invitation. <laughs> that sounds great. She's trying to... I I honestly think she's being... She's trying to be... There for Marian here. I'm trying to keep a brave face. But I'm sorry, I'm not sure what's going on anymore. Feels like I'm still dreaming. And once I wake up, you're worried you'll forget everything. Not to worry, I'm the beast of taming. The beast of taming. Unlike humans, I never forget my debts. The beast of taming. That can't... That... That doesn't make sense. How is taming her way of... She... Primate Zoo pets... She... Her love for humanity... Is, to, is that she loves us like she would a pet? That we're, she loves us... She didn't like... She helped out those that were weak. Exploited those who were strong. So she loves... When... Humans are weak, and wants to keep them weak, so that she can continue to love them. Maybe? Thank you for calling me your friend, my eccentric little princess. It would be an honor to purchase your joy and grief for my catalog. I'd never sell them, of course. I'm quite fond of you. I see. Then do you think you could pay me for them now? I was an idiot. I couldn't keep my anger, my hatred in check. I'm responsible for this. I should have re realized who the true enemy was, but instead I was used and manipulated right to the end. So at the very least... You like to get your revenge? You just leave that to me. I will follow these blood stains and find whoever. No, I want you to at least protect Britain. She loves humans who are suffering. I think she just loves the weak, honestly. We fairies may be fated to die, help. We can never atone for our sins. Even so, I still want you to protect Britain, protect the land of the Fae. I don't want the Great Calamity to just wipe us all out on its own terms. I want us to reach our destination, even if it is the end of the line. Can I ask this of you, Koyan? Even though you're all alone in this world, just like me. Protect Britain in the true sense of the word, hmm? Alright, I'll do it. If you're looking for me to protect rather than destroy, it's obvious what needs protecting. Rest assured, NFF Services has, situation, has the situation well in hand. Make sure the ones who can make the real villain's life hardest stay safe and sound. That's Koyon's Beast 4. Marines, can you put up... Can you put that up on the monitor? It's no use. Our cameras are being jammed. Our sonar is not working either. Ah. Do you keep those annoying pulses off me, won't you? They're messing with my concentration. Mm, sonar jamming, eh? As with Limbo, it's only a matter of time until we we'll need to settle things with Koyan. I was hoping to collect some data that would help us eventually subdue her, along with some inspiration for my deductions. Well, are you going to escape now? Escape or not, this emergency evacuation service expires soon. If you need my services again, it's going to cost you dearly. 
Right, get us out of here, double quick. I certainly don't want to be stuck with a preposterous bill. But we will pay you in full for the service eventually. You can count on that as surely as you can count on the bruises we left on you with after our battle in Olympus. Oh no, Kisa wasn't clear. That was a reference to the fact that we trounced you during the... Uh... Oh? Crap, we just lost some power to the engines again. Can't, Chubbs, you're messing up our motivation. No, it's not that. Pressure is building up again. It looks like even Koyan can only hold on, hold it off for so long. Manier, get us out of here. Whatever you have to do, do it. I don't care if you have to ruin one of the Triton engines. Make it happen. Aye, aye, sir. I'll apologize to Engineer later. Uh, that doesn't look good. And that's as far as the friend discount goes. The rest is up to Caldea. As for me, I think it's time I return to my headquarters. So this is Sir Nunnis' curse. He's a mistake for a weapon capable of destroying it, the world. But this curse isn't meant for enemies from the outside. It's for cursing your own kind and yourself. A curse of self-destruction. The only way I could defend their ship from it was to absorb it myself. What a sorry state of affairs this turned out to be. That doesn't sound good for Koyan. And so the Chaldean ship barely managed to escape from central Britain. Vargas now transformed into the, an enormous calamity of the beast, and he'd wreaking havoc in other cities. Having crawled out from the pit, Sir Nunes continued exuding seemingly endless curses. The very villages that dotted Britain's forests burned to the ground, which itself began to crack and fall apart under the strain. Two hours have passed since the storm border first set out with the goal of saving Britain. They couldn't save anything. The residents of Norwich came to blows over who had escaped one of the two ocean liners, eventually devolving into murderous mobs of fairies and humans. In a barber shop on Main Street, a con young human man confronted a fairy woman who had succumbed to panic. The residents of Oxford, who had moved there with the hope of becoming the next privileged class, were destroyed when they were unable to fend off a Moore's attack. Without the Fang Clan there to protect them, they were utterly powerless. Although Salisbury managed to defend itself by keeping its gates closed, it was coming to an even more gruesome end than any of the other cities. Londinium continued to burn in silence. A few remaining Round Table Army soldiers welcomed the fairies who fled there and did their best to fight off any moors. Though in truth, the Round Table Army soldiers were already badly injured and no longer able to fight. So the fairies who sought refuge there summoned up the last of their courage and defended the soldiers for as long as they were able. The residents of Gloucester disappeared relatively painlessly, one at a time. The young girl who had been freed from the Western Range some time before made the journey back to Gloucester after a series of trials and tribulations. She braved her way through the flames to rescue her former master, the failure of a fairy who had been helpless without her. After a tearful reunion, the girl and the fairy joined hands before being swallowed up by the fissure in the ground. This is horrible. All of Britain's beauty is gone. Indeed, Miss Kyrlite. Once the other Lost Belt's trees of emptiness were gone, they disappeared as well, but their inhabitants were none the wiser. This is nothing like that. Britain is experiencing a true apocalypse. Even if there were some reason that the land of the Fae had to meet such a dreadful end, I shall never be able to forgive the architects of this cataclysm. Y yes, well, I understand why you would be so heartbroken by this, Kyrlite. And you have every right to be angry, Holmes. But we still need to do something about it, yes? Left on track, that haze seeping from the pit is going to cover the entire planet, right? Isn't there something we can do to seal the pit? No, there isn't. We can't even get close to the storm border in the storm border anymore. Twelve Rungo Minions were our last hope, and they've all been destroyed along with Camelot. There's nothing we can do to stop the collapse of Majesty is too protected anymore. I'm afraid she's right. Britain's destruction is inevitable now. And from there, that destruction will spread across the rest of the globe until proper human history, the Lost Worlds, and everything else is swallowed up by darkness. Oh, I'm pretty sure Brazil would survive. <clears throat> hey, now, there's still hope. I'd hold out for at least another hour before giving up. Sure, the very sins have been accumulating for 14,000 years. Sure, we've now faced with both calamities the prophe prophecy predicted and the corpse of a god that just popped out of the pit. There's not, nothing proper human history can do about any of that. 
But all that stuff is also cosmic fantasy only made possible by this situation. The British lost will become its own proper human history by virtue of turning into a singularity. That is, a distortion in history. In other words, repairing that singularity will restore history, resulting in the land of the Fae ne having never existed. And isn't that Caldea's specialty? Merlin. Guess I recognize it too, I'd know it anywhere. Hey, hey everyone, Merlin the Mage of Flowers is here at last. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. Now come on, cheer up, it's not like you all had to give up so easily. In fact, the real battle here in Britain is just about to begin. Oh boy, the real battle's about to begin, huh? Lovely. That was section 26, I think? Yeah. I'm very tempted to do section 27. Very tempted, but it is already getting late, so I think I'm going to call the stream of FGO here. Um, yeah, the map is changing. That must be Bargust, because I saw it initially there, and there's Sir Nonus, kind of low pixel resolution there, but still, that is cool that this map is changing. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to call the stream here. Tomorrow, I'm going to continue with more... Fate Grand Order. No, it's getting too late and my throat is honestly starting to hurt from all the talking. So yeah, tomorrow we'll continue. Um, probably get more sections out of the way tomorrow. Make as much progress as I can. I am on a bit of a time limit tomorrow because I do have a Zoom meeting for my schooling later. <sighs> Excuse me, but I should at least still be able to get some done. So I'm going to call the stream here. I've been Solar Act Dragon. Fairy Britain has fallen at this point. And all that's left that we can do is put it out of its misery. So we'll start that process tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening, everybody.